You're not going to believe this. Apparently, the universe works in mysterious ways. So gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Janley starting a business, building a brand blog. This one, big number, 226. So, where do I even start? All right, back up a little bit. See, I can't even, like, I don't even know where to start. So, okay, we'll start here. So you guys have all heard me talk about my, my former business, the gym, it exploding, and, and you've seen me cry and get all emotional about it. And the reason I get so emotional about it, it, it it's partly because that, that business was all I ever wanted from the age of 12. That's part of it. The other reason was that I didn't know what my next step was. I didn't know what my plan B was because I didn't have one. But the main reason why that time in my life was so incredibly tragic and hard for me was that I lost my best friend. Um, my business partner at the time, Linda, um, she was somebody who I, I've, I've mentioned a bunch of times on this vlog. I've mentioned it in my YouTube channel, and, and she's somebody that, that, I, I, that I love incredibly much, and, and she was somebody who went out on a limb. Um, I helped her lose 100 pounds. I met her at the nutrition store. She said, hey, I want to help other people do what you did to me. Let's open a, a personal training studio. Like, that's sort of how that worked. Well, anyway... Linda and I had this bond, right? We were so incredibly close, like as close as two people could be without being married or sleeping with them, right? And so her and I, or parents, <laughs> okay. So super close, you get the idea. So anyway, the hardest part about that business failing was not you know, necessarily the financial ruin, it was that I lost my best friend, somebody who I would have taken a bullet for and would have taken one for me. That was the hardest emotional thing for me. And so, you know, it was a hard time for her. It was a hard time for me. She didn't come to my wedding. Like, all sorts of, like, weirdness went on. So anyway, I used to get all upset, right? I used to cry all the time. Not all the time, but whenever I'd talk about it, I would get super emotional. But then, like, literally, literally, like, three weeks ago, I think I even mentioned it in this vlog. I had this, like, freaking epiphany. I came to the realization that if she had not left, if she had not, like, totally, like, cut off communication with me, I would not be the person I am today. I would also have not been as successful as I am. And the reason is because I would have been trying to do something with her, probably in the fitness industry. I would have been trying to make sure she was okay. And so it, it, it would have prevented me from sort of like, like, you know how like mother birds like kick birds like when they're, when they're baby birds like out of the nest and it's like, okay, you better fly. Like this is it. That's kind of what happened to me and the way that I think about it, I was forced to be a man. I was forced to figure shit out on my own. I didn't have anybody else to rely on. I needed to figure out the direction for me, Aaron Marino, moving forward with my life. And this could not have happened in the manner that it did if she was still around and I was still maintaining a friendship with her. It was a reality that I, that I came to. It was like an epiphany. And all of a sudden, like my, like my mindset, and it shifted. I told my wife, I think I even told you, I told other people that, you know what, I feel okay. Like, it had to happen that way. And I haven't cried ever since, <laughs> right? So then, I'm, 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 two weeks ago, I'm having the last influential conference, so I, I really sort of just, like, compartmentalized it, and, and you know, and I, and I think I dealt with it. And I'd always said, and this, is, this is where things get funny, so I always said, man, I just, like, like, I look for her when I go into airports. I knew she moved to, like, Illinois. I look for her. I, I hope I run into her. I just like to sit down and have coffee with her, right? <laughs> Be careful what you wish for, gentlemen, because the universe has, it, it, it's funny the way that it worked out. So anyway, <laughs> do you enjoy this story? If you're enjoying this vlog and a little inside information, why don't you drop us one of those? It helps out. Anyway, so the Men Influential Conference is over, right? Okay, great, it's, 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 it happened, it was done, and Antonio and I were just like, oh, right? And so the last day of the conference was Saturday. He then came and spent the night at my house um, on, on Sunday, and then Monday he was going to be leaving. But our typical routine is we'll get up in the morning, we'll go to Starbucks, and we kind of just hang out, and then we'll go for a run, and we just enjoy spending time with each other and sort of decompressing, and this one was a big one, you know, because other years, we'd always be focused on, okay, who's going to send the email? We got to get this uh, situated. We got to get this lined up. We were already, like, in planning mode for the next one. Well, this one, it wasn't, wasn't happening. So here's the situation. So Antonio and I decide to sleep in a little bit on, on that Monday. We get up. 
like, hey, let's go get some coffee, then go for a run, and okay, great. So we get to Starbucks, and my typical wardrobe in the morning is a winter hat, if it's cold, my jacket, and then I put my glasses on, and anyway, the reason why that matters is, I'll tell you what, actually, hang on, okay. So we get to Starbucks, that's what I'm wearing. Um, I order, so I sit down, I open my computer, and I, and I look across Starbucks, and, and no, no. Because see, here's the thing. This has happened to me a bunch of times. I'll see somebody that has like short blonde hair, and I'll think, is that her? And then I'll look, and I'll try to like make it like it is. Well, this time, I saw her, I'm like, oh. And I was like, no, 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 no. It can't be. And so then I was trying to make it not her. I had my, at this point, I had my glasses on, and I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, when I realized who it was, I literally must have turned completely white. Antonio at this point sits down and he goes, what's the matter? I, go, I lean and I go, my, my business partner, Linda, my old one? And he's like, yeah, because I don't think he knew the, like, the whole story. He's like, I'm like, she's behind you. And at this point, I am shaking. I was nauseous. I literally thought I was going to pass out. I didn't know what to do. I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? She didn't recognize me. She didn't, like, she had no clue who I was. I don't even know if she saw, she had to have seen me walk in. But here's what I started thinking. I'm like, I'm like, she just doesn't recognize me. She didn't see the ears because I had like, I had a toboggan on. I also had glasses on. When I knew her, I never wore glasses. I also didn't have a beard back then and I was a little bit chubbier in the cheeks. And so she just didn't recognize me. Her, I recognized like that, right? And so I'm sitting there like, like hiding kind of like behind like Antonio. I took the picture as you can see like, like the shoulder, that's Antonio. Because I just needed, I just needed confirmation. I needed to send it to like other people that knew her to be like, am I crazy or is this? And I knew. And, um, and so, so I'm in there. So now like Antonio's like, well, what are you going to do? I'm like, okay. I'm like in a coffee shop, here's my opportunity. And I'm just watching her like for like literally probably like 45 minutes. And, um, and I was waiting, I was waiting for her to like look over and see me and, and, and I started to think to myself, okay, okay, how am I going to play this situation? I've always said that I want to go up and have coffee and this and that, but do I really? I started to actually think, I'm like, all right, she hasn't wanted to reach out or see me in 15 years. If I go up to her, one of two things is going to happen. Both of us are just going to be a crying, blubbering mess, or she's going to freak out and run out because it's totally unexpected and she was not wanting to see me. And I really kind of felt like it was a no-win situation. The other thing that I kind of came to realize is that I don't know that I really want to just talk to her unless she wants to talk to me. And so I think it would have been different if she would have been like, hey, you know, I'm going to be in town, let's get together. I'd be like, yes, this would be awesome, and I'd be prepared. But shocking somebody to that degree, I didn't think it would be a good scenario or situation. And I honestly was like, you know what, what happens if I start talking to her? What happens if she's not doing great? What happens if something, like, what happens? Am I going to all of a sudden be like an emotional wreck and, and not you know, like feel guilty or whatever the situation may be. And what am I going to say, right? What am I going to say to her? Yeah, so things are going pretty well for me. Like, like I, I, know, I know me. I know that I'd be like, yeah, you know, you know. Like I'd try to really like play it off because I would be uncomfortable. It just, like it made me, it, I didn't know what to do. But then I started thinking, I'm like, all right, so, so what do I do? Do I, if I leave, well, I regret not doing it. That was the biggest thing that I was worried about. I'm like, here's my opportunity. I may never get this chance again. It's now, today. Here it is. What do you do? Will I regret it? And the conclusion I came to was, nope, I won't regret it. And so we got up and we left. And I never said anything, and I don't think she, she saw me. I don't think she knew who I was, because I know that if she did, she probably would have left. Um, but that was it. I sent a picture to Tracy, my, my wife, and she goes, no way. Like all these, all these people, like, are you kidding me? Like she doesn't even live here. And the fact that it was my Starbucks in Marietta, just the most random thing. Now here's the whole like conspiracy theory. So, so some of my friends have said, she watches all your stuff. She knows everything that you do. And she knows that that's your Starbucks. And she went there specifically looking for you.
And so that's like the other like sort of side to this. And I don't think that, honestly, I don't think that at all. And uh, that, would be, that would be weird though if, if I did. And then she'll see this vlog and be like, why didn't you come up to me anyway? Then, and Lynn, if you're watching this, call me. The number is the same. We can get coffee. I would love to, but I just wasn't, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I didn't know what to do. So anyway, that happened. And for the rest of the day, when I say that my mind, like I couldn't, like if you would have asked me to like my social security number, or my phone number, or to spell my name, I couldn't do it. My mind was so like just blown and I was just, I was all messed up all day long. But that's the story. It happened. It freaking happened. And for you guys out there that have been following along, you know how crazy this is. It's just so crazy. <laughs> But life is funny, man. Life is funny. Sitting there behind Antonio. <laughs> like, boom. <laughs> exactly. Freaking crazy. She still looked good, looked the same, a little bit older, but apparently, you know, 15 years will do that. And I'm sure that I, I look different, obviously, because she didn't recognize me. But, uh, but that was the story. And I just wanted to tell you because you've been around and, and you know probably how much that's weird <laughs> and, uh, and how crazy it is. And uh, so anyway, something else kind of crazy that I'm about to do, which I'm nervous about, is for you guys out there that are entrepreneurs, there's an incredible podcast called Mixergy. And I apparently am going to be on, Andrew, uh, the host of Mixergy, um, his story is amazing, is, is going to be interviewing me. And I was talking to my buddy Eric Banholtz at... Um, at the uh, at the conference, and I said, "Hey, I, I have this, you know, sort of, you know, this this opportunity to to be interviewed on on Mixergy." And he goes, "Dude, I was on Mixergy. It was the hardest interview I've ever had." And then I started talking to some other people, and apparently, Andrew like grills you and really goes and dives deep into the numbers. And so, I have a pre-interview tomorrow with somebody um, on his team, and apparently, like the pre-interview is just to kind of get the bugs out and the nerves out and to go over some of your story and your numbers so that Andrew has more information when, when he's interviewing you. Uh, but I'm really nervous about it, honestly. I'm freaked out. <laughs> but but uh, my buddy Antonio, who, who knows Andrew, says as long as you don't bullshit him, like it's totally cool and you'll have a great, great experience. But apparently when people like try to lie or bullshit or, or like fluff the numbers and things like that, he has a way of figuring out that you're lying. And he also said, Antonio said that, you're going to have to answer some hard questions. Eric said the same thing. Like they're going to, he's going to do his due diligence, like super due diligence, and ask you about things that you probably wished he didn't. You know, ask me things about like Ollie, possibly the fashion anchor, like my gym, like all sorts of things. And I think I'm ready. I sort of was uncomfortable about talking about numbers because if, if that's one of the things that you guys haven't figured out yet, like talking about like money and the numbers and things like that, some people love talking about that. They're really, you know, excited to talk about, you know, finances and their business and how much money, you know, they make and stuff like that. But if you haven't figured that out, that's not me. I'm super uncomfortable with it. And whenever, like, even in that, like, Kevin O'Leary interview, when, when he was asking me, I'm like, oh, you know, just, you know, I'm, I, I, I don't like talking about it. And one of the reasons why I don't like talking about it is, is because I feel like when you start focusing on money, it takes the, the soul out of what you're doing, why you're doing it. The other thing that, that, is, that is hard for other people to comprehend is that just because you might be doing a lot of money in terms of top line revenue, that doesn't mean profit, like far from it. The other thing that, um, I don't know, I'm just uncomfortable with talking about money, to be honest, and, and businesses, and, that, and I'm uncomfortable with it. But um, I'm not sure how I'm going to address the topic when, when Andrew asks me. I don't know whether or not just to kind of like lean into it because this is a great opportunity um, to be on his podcast and this podcast will a lot of times lead to other opportunities to talk about you know, business and entrepreneurship because that's the thing that I love, right? I love talking about business, if you can't tell. I love entrepreneurial tales and, and stories and so that's kind of my thing and so so I'm excited, but I'm nervous, and I'll let you know and report back as to how the pre-interview went, and then you know eventually I'll, I'll do the interview, and I will, um, depending on how it goes, link to it. <laughs> I can't promise you anything. No, I'm kidding. I will definitely tell you. But if you guys haven't checked out Mixergy, guys, I'm gonna link to it down below. Just they're doing incredible things. It's all about entrepreneurial tales and stories, and and 
advice. And so, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, you're thinking about it, as I know you are, you definitely need to be checking it out because, you know, if we can learn from other people's mistakes or how they did certain things that we can sort of absorb and, and help and learn from, um, that's the reason why Andrew does that. Andrew is like a super crazy, uber successful guy, sold businesses and stuff like that. And that's what he's passionate about. And so I think it's pretty awesome. So we should have fun, but <laughs> he's intense and I'm nervous, but you know, I'm okay. I've, I've been nervous in, in hard situations before like Shark Tank um, and other, other situations. So I, I think I'll be all right, but who knows? Gentlemen, that's where I'm gonna wrap things up. If you have a business question, down in the comments, start it with business question and ask it. There was an amazing business question from last vlog talking about ethics, please. Ask it again in this vlog because I, I, I need to answer that. It is such important, it's so important and critical that we address, you know, ethics and what do you do? And in business, you're going to be faced with decisions. You know, you go one way, you go the other way and, and your moral compass is, is incredibly important. And so I would love to, love to actually talk about that next week. So please, I think it was Adar Kawad or Awad, what? So Kadar Awad, please copy and paste that business question down below, and next week we will get to it. Next week, guys, it's all about you and your questions. Um, sorry for monopolizing this one, but it was big, right? This is a big thing. You, you know how big it is. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. And as always, T. Shanley loves you more than your actually are. See, even talking or thinking about it, it's got my brain all messed up. We love you more than our double monk strap shoes. Guys, thanks so much for your support, your love, and more importantly, your friendship.